new clash with the coronavirus and collapsing oil prices taking a big toll this morning. Check out crude oil prices. Right now, WTI is below $32 a barrel. That's a decline of $9.30 a barrel, more than 22% down. If that level for WTI held through the end of the day, this would be the second worst on record for the commodity, the worst being the first day of Operation Desert Storm during the first Gulf War. Crude's been under pressure over the last few weeks because of softening demand because of the coronavirus. Then this week in Saudi Arabia announced big cuts to its official oil selling prices for April. Reuters reports that the country plans to boost its crude output above 10 million barrels a day. All of this came after the breakdown of talks between OPEC producers and Russia late last week. OPEC wants its members, as well as its allies like Russia, to agree to further production cuts on top of the cuts that are already in place. Russia rejected that proposal for the new cuts, and key players could not come to an agreement on what to do about the current cuts that are set to expire next month. That means if nothing changes, oil producers will be able to pump as much as they want in just a few weeks, and that's why you're seeing this extreme pressure today. Andrew. Uh, from all what we're seeing in the markets this morning, I want to bring in CNBC senior market commentator Mike Santoli to help us try to understand where this is all headed beyond just down. Mike. Yes, uh, Andrew, and one of the ways to think about it is not just how far down, but how far back in time this move might take us. If you look at the, uh, the SPY, the S&P 500 ETF, uh, as you see, they're down almost 7%. So basically, once we open regular trading, as Joe just said, if this index, the actual index is down 7%, you have a 15-minute trading hall, it looks like uh, we're a little too close to the hot stove not to touch it uh, at the moment. But uh, how far back does this take us? Well, it, it takes you to the uh, mid to early part of last year we're at levels that were first reached in late 2017 to so really unwound a lot of, uh, of that upside that we've seen a lot of folks are talking about levels right around here 2750 2740 this times 10 is the index uh, where maybe you might find some fundamental highs but you know we're talking about the uh, credit markets and the oil markets and the Treasury markets being in such extreme states that everyone's compass is kind of just spinning wildly right now all the models are thrown off this is the high yield ETF so this includes pre-market action as well as uh, a Treasury ETF. And here's what you see, right? Furious vertical rally in Treasury prices, therefore yields going towards zero, and high yield not helped by that oil crack uh, going the other direction. Uh, if you look at things like credit default swap uh, trading on the indexes, we're back to kind of talking about these things if you're in the financial crisis. Furious, furious amounts of hedging going on right now in the high yield area. So right now I view each part of the capital markets largely reacting to other parts of the capital markets and therefore the stresses on institutional investors and traders as they try to navigate this stuff. Not so much trading on every headline about the virus or the economy. Mike, thank you. Joining us right now is Jeffrey Rosenberg, BlackRock System Systemic Multi-Strategy Fund Senior Portfolio Manager, and Barbara Reinhardt, who is Senior Portfolio Manager and Head of Asset Allocation at Boya. Um, obviously some weird things are happening. Jeffrey, let, let's start with you. What do you do this morning as you see these massive dislocations? Is this the time to actually try and buy, or do you step back and see what, happen, what happens, how things shake out? Yeah, I, I think it's a time, you know, clearly we're in the middle of panic. It's to look forward as to what the policy responses are going to be here. And, you know, the bond market is pricing in multiple further cuts from the Fed, but we're long beyond the role of monetary policy. So I think what we're looking for here are other sources of support, and that is going to take a little bit of time, but I think that's what we're going to see next, and that may be what the market needs to find a little bit of solace as to the, what your earlier guest was just saying. We, we will get through this. We've seen these before, and I think that policy response as it's forthcoming will, will really be the trigger for the market to see some stabilization, but clearly this morning is, is full-on panic. Your earlier comments about you know summarizing the oil situation very nicely, summarizing you know another shock to the system, and so the, the market is being shocked. In some sense, that's what you need to find these kind of cathartic bottoms. But it's also what's necessary to to bring about the fiscal policy response that I think is going to be forthcoming. Steve Leisman is here. He's got a statement from the New York Fed. Is it Steve? Yeah, uh, right on cue with uh, Jeff's call for policy response. New York Fed increasing, uh, at least in just the last 45 minutes, it's increasing the amount of overnight repo on offer <coughs> from uh, to $150 billion from $100 billion. It's upping the amount of two-week term repo, this is the longer repo, uh, to $45 billion from $20 billion. These changes will be in effect through March 12th. The Fed saying in a statement that these adjustments are intended to 
ensure that the supply of reserves remains ample, and to mitigate the risk of money market pressures that could adversely affect policy implementation, which is code for keeping the funds rate where the committee set it. So uh, they're, I assume, taking preemptive action on potential. Right. Um, Not a response. Uh, oh. uh, as far as I know, there is no response. Mike was talking about some of the pressures in the high yield market. I don't know to the extent. I'll talk to some people on repo desk later this morning, I suppose, or maybe as soon as they get off set. To see if there's been any pressure in the repo markets, but oh, this is that's the email I got this morning. Is doing preemptively to get ahead. I said earlier, limit down. Hour, I <clears> that SEC rules limit down or in fact. I'm not sure this is it just yet. Uh, in terms of broader liquidity, this is specifically to the over. I'll not be able to enter orders via the online or mobile trading platforms and must instead contact an investment professional. Let's see if that's going to hold. All right. That's what's going on this morning. It's going to be a bloodbath at the open. <clears throat> SEC rules are going to be triggered. Limit down is in effect right now. And the limit down rules. The SEC's limit down rule prohibits trading activity in exchange listed securities at prices outside specified price bands, upper and lower bands, which are established at a percentage level above and below the average price of a security over the immediately preceding five minute period. The market for a security will enter a limit state if the national best bid equals the upper price band or the national best offer equals the lower price band. They're talking about the bid and the ask, the buy and the sell. The market for a security will enter a straddle state if the NBB is below the lower price band. A five minute trading pause will generally be triggered for security if a limit state exists for 15 seconds and during a straddle state at the discretion of the primary exchange. During limit and straddle states and during a trading pause, <clears throat> WFA will continue to accept and route customer orders in the same manner as during a trading halt. Um, so, basically the whole stock market is going to be on limit. Trading halts normally occur when to keep stock mark the stocks from falling at too big of a rate too fast so the stock market itself doesn't crash well it's going to be a bloodbath this morning the response would be more, more effective and these are also things that the Fed is injecting, but will also be able to pull back when things normalize. You have to remember, this is a very time-specific period that we are in. Three, six months from now, we will probably not be talking about the coronavirus, and the Fed will be able to withdraw these measures. But I think it's really important that you're putting some support underneath pockets of the economy that are feeling most vulnerable well, to it. I want to be optimistic, but why are you? I'm optimistic because I've been through this before. I've been working in the markets for 30 years, so 1989 was a great starting point for bad things to start happening. I would also say things that we're watching at Boya are level. Yep, it's going to be a bloodbath this morning. No way around it. So, my strategy is to put back, put back on the inverse funds. FNGD, SOXS. TECS, TWM, FAZ, HDGE. 
for starters. After the open, we'll see what happens. It is definitely going to be a bloodbath this morning. <clears throat> so, but we do have stocks moving. What is going to be going to the positive side? Good question. Yeah, the cues are popping up. AMD's down. It's been on tear lately, but it's down. Spy is definitely down. There's not much moving on by way of positivity this morning. Well, I'll put this on here. I'll bring this up. Come on, let me see my scanner. There we go. This is my scanner here. Not much is moving positively. <clears throat> Yeah, all inverse funds, UVXY, they're coming up. SQQQ coming up. INO, that's a pharmaceutical, that's coming up. It's not open yet, but this change from the open is showing me what is going down presently. And it's all down. Now let's look at the sectors. Yep, they're all down. All bright red and plummeting. Energy taking the biggest hit at over negative 14. Utilities and real estate aren't faring too bad. Real estate and utilities are down 2 and 3%. That was a search criteria. But this is what we're looking at. Let's blow that up. This is how I know what's going, what's moving pre-market. Let's get that out of the way. All right. Well, that's seven nineteen local, eight nineteen in New York, and time to get ready for the day. But that's today's headlines. That's what's happening. Record lows for treasury yields. Record lows for oil. Lows for futures. The markets are going to open up down 1,300 points. And let's see if we get a bounce off today or if it keeps going. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 